civilized 21st century and 120,000 Christians, 30,000 of them children, are held hostage by one dictator. This is not fiction. It's happening right now. On Christmas Eve, 120,000 Christian Armenians in the Democratic Republic of Artsakh were put under siege by one dictator, Aliyev, the corrupt president of the neighboring country, Azerbaijan. Ilham Aliyev inherited the power over Azerbaijan from his father, KGB agent, Haydar Aliyev, who in turn had control over the country for decades. Armenians were the first nation to adopt Christianity as a state religion in 301 AD. Despite continuous attacks by Romans, Arabs, Turks, and others, Armenians remained in their motherland. Even after the Armenian Genocide in 1915, organized by the Ottoman Empire, where 1.5 million Armenians were massacred, they still stayed living in their homeland. To stop the next genocide by the next tyrant, go to unblockhumanity.com and act now. One of the standout examples of the Armenian commitment to the preservation of their land and culture is the Armenian state of Artsakh, the Democratic Republic of Artsakh. Armenians have been living for more than 3,000 years in Artsakh, which is also known by its Russian-Turkish name, Nagorno-Karabakh. They stayed here even though Soviet leaders literally gifted Artsakh with its 95% Armenian population to Azerbaijan in 1921. And ever since, Armenians have been under constant ethnic cleansing by the Azerbaijani government. In 2020, Azerbaijan attacked the Republic of Artsakh and killed more than 4,000 Armenian soldiers and civilians, after which Russian peacekeepers entered the region and stood between Azerbaijan and Artsakh. After the war, the only connection to the rest of the world left for 120,000 Armenians in Artsakh is a 10 meter wide paved road. No sea, no air communications, no trains, nothing. Just one single road, which right now is entirely blocked by Azeris. Though the democratic West, including the USA, France, and Germany, as well as the UN and the EU, started to urge dictator Aliyev to open the corridor the road still remains blocked. Aliyev's goal of finishing off the ethnic cleansing in Artsakh remains in full force. Freedom House ranks Azerbaijan as one of the most repressive states, and Transparency International ranks it among the world's most corrupt. And yet, dictator Aliyev, the president of Azerbaijan, and his wife, the vice president of Azerbaijan, accumulate their wealth by selling Azerbaijan's oil and gas to the Western world. Moreover, they're deceiving Europe by secretly selling them Russian gas. In fact, Aliyev's regime recently signed a contract for buying 1 billion cubic meters of Russian gas. Due to this siege, essential life supplies such as food, medicine, and other necessities cannot reach Artsakh. People are starving, shops are closing, kids are left without food, hospitals stay without key medical supplies. There are constant gas, electricity, and internet cuts due to the lines being interrupted by Azeris. Dozens of people who have been separated from their families since December 12, 2022 cannot return to their homes. Though the people of Artsakh are very strong and stand the hardships, they may simply not survive if the siege continues. But this is the case where we, the people, can bring the change. To see what you can do to unblock humanity in Artsakh, go to unblockhumanity.com and act now before it's too late. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Medherosner podcast, a very special episode. We're calling it Unity Beyond Borders, the diaspora's role in the Artsakh blockade. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. It's Thursday. August 24th, 2023. I'm your host, Vika And as always, I'm joined by Mike Balian, but he's running late, so he's not here. He'll join us soon. Um, where we discuss our great Armenian history, covering different eras and topics. Uh, please hit that like button, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends and family. Uh, you may join us in the conversation and the chat, ask us any questions, and ask questions to our guests. Um, a lot of you know that I was in Armenia and I just got back. Um, we're going to launch our season four next week, but I really wanted to do something uh, due to the current situation. Uh, we all know what's taking place in Artsakh and the Lachin Corridor. 
um, on December 12th of 2022, Azerbaijan blockaded the corridor under the fake pretext of environmental concerns. They basically um, hired these fake activists who were paid by uh, the uh, Azerbaijan government. And then uh, a few months ago, they uh, pretty much set up a military um, checkpoint. And um, uh, basically, they're not allowing any type of essentials to go in, food, uh, medicine. And uh, on top of that, they keep cutting the electricity, the gas, um, uh, internet. Um, and their goal is to create an unbearable situation where these indigenous people of Artsakh, who are our Armenian brothers and sisters, either leave or starve to death. Um, and this is uncalled for. So, um, you know, when I was in Armenia, I was also following the social media of everything that was happening here in the States as a diasporan. We, you know, you, you want to do so much. And um, I know that after the war, there was a lot of disappointment. Uh, that unity we had during the war has kind of died down. But I think uh, it's time for it to come back. And um, uh, today our guests are um, longtime activists who are just regular people with regular lives who love Armenia and Artsakh and have done so much. Um, so I wanted to bring them on and talk about the diaspora's role uh, being involved in bringing awareness to the blockade on the international level and uh, because uh, every day counts right now. It's very dire. Um, uh, I want to introduce Anush Muradian and David uh, Manatsakanyan, um, who uh, are the ones who were involved with the uh, traffic blockade. Um, and then from there, you guys went to the Azerbaijan uh, consulate and held uh, a blockade there overnight. You got how many days? Six were, days. Six days. Uh, six days and nights. Yeah. And I think that hurricane didn't help, uh, yeah. but I think you guys needed a break as well. Yes. But. First, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, yourself, your background, how you got into activism, and then we'll go to David. Sure. Well, thank you for having us, first of all. Um, I'm Anush Muradian, um, mother of three that um, never went to sleep after 2020, um, being very active, doing human rights, activism, uh, protests, awareness, uh, anything possible to bring world's attention to um, Artsakh conflict situation and the people in right now. It's genocide 2023 right now. Yeah. We want to make sure that we call the things the way they are. It is genocide 2023. And uh, we've been holding a lot of protests about like POWs. We've had how many protests we've had, Dave, remember? Like three, four yeah. in different locations with different messaging demonstrations we've held. And today, we're losing Artsakh. I mean, uh, I can say it like that. And as you said, if day by day things are changing, I would say minute by minute. We're realists. We're not going to pretend that it's not happening. No, this it, is real. We're losing it, Artsakh. It's happening. Yeah. It's very unfortunate, and it's it's heartbreaking. And as an Armenian, I don't I don't understand if you're you're an Armenian and you you just don't think about it or you're not being realistic it's just you know we need to snap out of it and realize that yes we're losing yeah. our talk um i think the fatigue of the war um what i what i've noticed and and for when i was there i think a lot of people uh, especially from diaspora uh we you know everybody did a lot especially financially and uh we were expecting this great outcome which didn't happen uh, which was the wrong way to approach this. When you're doing something, you do it out of love, right? Exactly. Um, no matter what the outcome is, you keep fighting. Um, uh, and that fatigue, I think, has been on on the Armenian community diaspora too long. We need to snap out of it. Like you said, we need to wake up. Enough is enough. Um, and, uh, and, and <laughs> I mean, the things that I saw there, we'll get into it, uh, but... The point of this is about uniting everybody, waking everybody, uh, putting that yes. fire under everybody. Yes. Because if we don't do something right now, it might be too late tomorrow. Yes, or exactly. maybe an hour from now. Yeah, exactly. Um, that bad. Yeah, uh, David, can you tell people introduce yourself and a little bit about your background? Um, hi, I'm 
David Munatsakanyan, uh, I'm Armenian, of course. Um, love my country, endless. Um, since the war started, even before that, we've been always involved in Armenian community here in Armenia and um, in other regions of Armenia. We've done many projects before. Um, when the war started, obviously we could not sit in a home. We had to get up and then, you know, do our part because we're not there, we're not in a war zone, we're here. So I could not just stay home and then, you know, do nothing. Um, you know, we just did what we had to do and, you know, did protest, did everything we had to do. Even we did hunger strike to, to you know, raise awareness yeah. and reach out the, uh, you know, House of Representatives to, to know what's going on in the world. Okay. People need to know what's happening right now. Now, um, from all the protests you guys have done since since the war, and uh, we're talking off air that you guys have done so much, but once the blockade started last year, you guys have been extremely active. Um, what kind of results have you guys seen? What kind of disappointments have you seen? Uh, I, I want people, from, because you guys are in the trenches, you guys are out there uh, doing so much. Um, and I want people to understand the reality of what's happening. So can you guys talk about everything you go through, the stress, the struggle, um, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything? Sure. Do you want me to go ahead or do you want to? We can talk. I can well, um, since the first day of blockade, uh, actually that first night we spent overnight in front of Azari Consulate. Okay, the first disappointment was we were only 12 of us. That was my first disappointment. But then again, I thought, you know, it's the first day. Maybe people don't know it or they don't watch news. You know, there's always like excuses you try to yeah. find to yeah. kind of give everyone an excuse, yeah. right, to get out of it. But um, in reality, we should always be aware of everything that is happening and yeah. we can't be indifferent. So since that day we started, we've done numerous things uh, email blasts twitter tons like we have a huge team of volunteers mm. working on this cause day and night email blasts to uh, politicians to um, members of european parliament it's all on our website like everything everything yeah. we've done it's what disappoints me is that everyone's trying to label like who's doing it it's like why do you care who's doing it? Like, th if this is your cause, that th you believe in this, like mm -hmm. you like it, just just click the button and, and send the email. Yeah. If if there's one sentence that you don't like, you can easily change it. Of course. I mean, come on, it, it doesn't take much. It's a click, 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 and yeah. we make even Twitter tones. We make it so easy. Pre-draft, we put it in the link, and we try to make everyone's life so easy so they yeah. don't have an excuse. Oh, my English isn't well. I can't draft a, a tweet, or I can't draft them. I understand. Not everyone is you know technical in that but yeah. but then when you see the numbers they're like we pretty much gave you everything on a golden platter and yeah. all you need to do just take it Show up there yeah just you know or just be there like yeah. just come and support and, yeah. and i always tell everyone like oh what are these protests going to do that i'm like listen i went to protests in 2020 by just standing with my people mm -hmm. like energy there the love the support, the caring for one another, feeding each other, even the, the, the street pizza, it felt amazing. Yeah. The bond we've created, we've, we've, we are about like 30, 40 volunteers. I call ourselves yeah. patriots. Yeah. We, we became a family now. Of course. Since 2020, and we've been working together. And the love and respect we have for each other, it's unconditional. Yeah. Because we're only for one cause, and we're Armenians. Yeah regardless of everything else you know um uh, we'll talk about the achievements yes and what you guys have done so far um but i want to mention you guys see a uh, 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 uh not a hashtag um the um the qr code on the corner that is the unblock uh humanity if you scan that it will take you to the website like anush said everything's done it's on a platter just put your information send and it will Click. create everything and it will send it so um i, th I think there's like about thirteen thousand letters so far which is uh nothing n for nothing, nothing, nothing for, for a diaspora that is supposed to be 10 million um so uh share that please scan it 
uh, uh, complete it, share it with f- friends and family. Uh, this is very important. Oh, it, it, and I can't say this enough. We can't just sit there and watch other people or people like Anush and, and, and David do all the work. We, we have to well. join. We have to join. We have to help uh, support. If you can't be there, at least share it. Uh, get the word out there. Do something. Send a friend. Yeah. There you go. Send a friend. Call a friend, right? A friend. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yesterday, oh, I can't come. Like, you know, that's fine. Can you send two people? <laughs> <laughs> One thing, uh, the, the, you're a good <laughs> I like one that. One thing I can say um, about the disappointment, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's time in our community, not only Armenians and yeah. overall who lives in this geolocation uh-huh. where we are. Um, I feel like as a Biden citizens, we have to be more involved. What's going on in our communities too? Yeah. And um, I'll be honest with you, as a human activist myself too. If I see there is a cause related to any other nation that they're going into hard time, yeah, uh, I feel it's my moral responsibility to stand next to them and help them out too. Great point. If we can remember the you know Black Lives Matters, yeah, what happened? You know, I was I wasn't happy with all the violence things happened. Yeah, this and that with the Congress and House, or you know, in in, in capital and so on and on. But uh, overall, I think like as a community, we have to be all united. Yeah, and that's where we can keep our community safe. Yeah. And you know, help each other for anything that's of course in the community. And uh, I feel like a lot of Armenians, because of the past experience, uh, you know, they were very discouraged. Yeah, and they were not aware of what's going on. But Artsakh issue is a very, very serious issue. Of course, it's a it's a very sensitive topic, and people have different types of political views. Because of that, they they don't support. They don't. They they talk. You know, you know, behind about us, or you know, they they have a different opinion about that. Yeah. But however, we're there only for one reason, to raise awareness. And, you know, by united, by being united, all our minutes in the world, yeah. we strongly believe. Um, regarding of our political views, you know, we can be united. Yeah. And we can, you know, address this issue. And we can awaken all the Armenians that there are the countries and then, you know, address this. Yeah as an Armenian, as a diaspora representative. Yeah, that's the only way we can unite if we put all our differences aside. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, that's the biggest issue within the diaspora is these uh, so many fractions of, of political organizations, um, uh, NGOs, you know, that are, it seems like they care, but at the same time, their agenda is first, which is not the time for that. I understand. Everybody has their own mission. They want to do something, uh, which is great. But That's amazing. But at, at right now, it's it's not the time for that. Right now, we have only one agenda today. It's Artsakh. Yes, and well, and the other thing is, we're all Armenian. That's it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Politics don't matter. Your 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 you know whatever party you belong to doesn't matter. You are Armenian, and you need to stand up to what's going on because. One thing you mentioned, um, you know, genocides happen not just to Armenians. Other there's other, especially in Africa, there's yeah. a lot of genocides that have happened and will happen. And this should be an example that hey, if we allow this to happen, other countries, other other indigenous people will suffer as well because exactly. everybody's kind of turning a, bl- a blind eye. And um, you know, uh, I think we need to also as diasporans put aside. Um, the whatever the Armenian government is doing or whatever Azerbaijan, as human beings, we need to stand and bring the international community, other human beings, and say, this is not okay. And that exactly was my point. The next yeah. thing was about discouragement, right? Was uh, we have a House of Representative. Yeah. To me, uh, proper House of Representative, when you call, they have to be available. We shouldn't be on the streets and live on the street, literally yeah. stay on the street about six, seven nights until we get yeah. a response. Yeah. Uh, as a, as a people who lives here, if we want to reach our house of representative, it shouldn't be that hard. Of course. Cause they yeah. have to be here because they're being elected because of people. Of they course. represent us. They represent us. Yeah. And that's yeah, kind of the know, other way around. Yeah. They think like we work for them, but in yeah. all reality, they work for the people. That's the, well, that's American politics to you. That's yeah, just, I mean, we try to stay away from yeah. politics, obviously, as much as we can. Yeah. And we should. Yeah. We must. 
because us talking about Armenian politics, it's 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 a big no no. Yeah. First of all, we don't live there. Yeah. Second of all, um, there's this, there's no politics here. Yeah. And and one more thing, um, I like to mention. Every one of us, we have our own organizations, nonprofit organizations, our own businesses. Mm -hmm. We're regular people. Yeah. But we don't promote our companies. We don't yeah. do anything here. This is not about promotion. Yeah. Or, you know, or PR, is, right? Yeah, or PR. This is exactly like all we, our cause is like the Artsakh. And 120,000 people, they're in a blockade, which is in 21st century. It's hard for me to digest it. Right, it's unacceptable. Of course. Like, you know, we're not in 1800. We're like yeah. 2023. It's like, come on. Yeah. yeah, you know what? What was um, one thing I can share that I experienced over there? I was in Sunik, and when I saw the trucks going, I had no idea what was going on. My I didn't have service, so I didn't know what was happening. And uh, when I saw those trucks going, all of a sudden this feeling came where I'm like, "Oh my God, they're opening it! It's happening! It's happening!" But I didn't know because you know it was just like so random. And, uh, and then all of a sudden they're like, nope, not happening. You know, the minute I got back to Yerevan and I, I had service, I could, you know, see what was happening. And, uh, but that slight moment, uh, that feeling of, hey, my brothers and sisters are about to have aid, you know, but then again, the bad news. Um, it, it's, it's a very, uh, I mean, the emotional roller coaster that I went through over there and seeing the people, seeing uh, what they go through on a daily basis. Um, but you mentioned something. We don't live there, so we shouldn't get involved in the politics. But Never. at the same time, I think, you know, I've got criticized for saying, well, you don't live here. Your opinion doesn't matter. Th that's not true. You can no. guide people. You can guide by life experience, by ideas and things like that. But again, you know, I don't get involved in politics, but I, I have the right as an Armenian to, to say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. We do have the right as yeah. an individual to uh, raise an of opinion. Of course, as we, a human. We, as a human. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes to collective work, yeah. um, um, we were opening one of these nonprofits and we were talking about the structure. I said, look. I don't care if they're from any uh, political party. I don't care who they support. Yeah. We're going to keep the platform just Armenian. Yeah. If you're Armenian, regardless of, I have my views. Yeah. I'm a human. I have my views. I have my opinions. Of course. But I don't express it in a, in a group. Yeah. Because everyone has different views. And if we start talking about it, we're going to get divided even more. Of course. Not to have a division. Everyone needs to understand we put away all the flags yeah and we just have one flag and that's our armenian flag yeah. and we unite around our flag and our just by being armenian that's it perfect perfect that's yeah that, it. yeah that, that's all it is and and um you know you talk about division uh we also have division here between armenians which yes, is we do. which is very sad which is very sad so again the point of this is and what you guys are doing is let's put everything aside unite and you yes. guys have united you have you have different yeah, Ar you have armenians from different backgrounds in your in group we yeah. have different ages yeah armenians from different part of the world yeah um even from with different political views but we never talk about it yeah but from the very first meeting we decided no politics we just respect and love and we're armenians that's it but we get along Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> We've never had issues. We always, it's healthy to have discussion. But at the end of the day, we always agree on one thing. We stand by our talk. Yeah. And whatever we do, we do for the best interest of our talk. Yeah. If it doesn't fit the best interest of our talk, obviously we don't. Of course. But that's, that's the only way we can all work together. Yeah. Believe it or not, I'm telling you, we're all different. Of course. We're all different. So many ways, and that's the so beauty. It, it, that's the beauty of diaspora. Different. Yeah. Our little group. I want to say we represent the entire diaspora, and I'll tell you why. Because we have a representative from each, right? For each type of yeah. diasporans. We represent a small diaspora, yeah. and we want to set an example. Look, we're all different here, but we stand strong for one cause. That's Armenia and Arta. Yeah, that's what the rest of the world, Armenians in the rest of the world, they need to do. Yeah. Um, something about Artsakh. Um, we have somebody who t uh, is talking about learning about the history of Artsakh. Um, we did an episode with Dr. Gevork Nazarian in our first season, and 
he is a very knowledgeable man. man. You guys all know him. He's been on the show multiple times. Um, go watch that episode or listen to it. Uh, and you will learn so much about the history of Artsakh and how important it is. Artsakh has always been part of Armenia. Uh, Artsakh has played a big role in so many uh, historical periods. Um, and uh, there's another episode I recommend watching, which is with uh, Ruben Galician, who is a, uh, an, an amazing man. And um, we did a show about the historical maps of Armenia and every map and i'm talking about dating back uh, when they first started making maps i mean maps where you know you just see armenia syria and the artach is always there oh yeah it's been always um, part. so for me uh i don't care uh who it is i believe no foreign government even our own government has the right to decide what indigenous people which are the Artsakh people, the Armenians from Artsakh, what they, how they get to live, where they get to live. And that's where the more. human issue comes in. Yes. And um, that's what it's about. And we're going to mention this. It's a, it's a human issue. It's a human struggle. Yes, and uh, again, I don't care about the government. I don't care about the politics. We need to unite. And um, we have, uh, there's a, you know what, before I get to that, can you guys... Um, kind of talk about i know you guys got a lot of heat about this when you guys blocked the freeway the 134 is that was I, amazing though it was amazing and um I'm, I'm proud of and i know a lot of people don't agree with it because they felt that you guys were you know uh, inconveniencing some people but you know what uh, you can inconvenience anybody for a couple of hours it's fine uh for the for to the bring awareness cause. to the good cause um but how did that come out? Can you guys kind of walk through that whole process, what you guys went through and everything? I wish I was here. I wasn't, but um, I, tell people what you guys experienced, what it was like. And then from there, deciding to go to do the blockade at the Azerbaijan consulate and what kind of um, maybe, uh, I don't know if they did anything kind of like towards you guys, you know, just. Yeah, we've had someone there. Okay. Well, originally, do you want you want me to go or you want to? Oh, whoever. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, originally we started in Burbank in front of Adam Schiff's office. I mean, Adam Schiff, he's always been great. And yeah. for the past 20 years, he's done a lot for Armenia. A yeah. lot. I can't deny that. We did send a letter, an uh, email to him with everything that we would like to ask yeah. and maybe, you know, meeting, but we haven't heard from him and we're like, you know, it's time to get up and hit the streets again. So we started the protest in front of his office. Mm -hmm. We stand it with five five nights. Yeah. Night. Which night we did we do the freeway? Was it the fifth, the last night? No. The six. We went to Artsakh Street to as a symbolic action, and then from there on we organized to go to. Uh, uh, we've been on the, on the street for so many days. I forgot which day yeah. was the freeway. <laughs> yeah. And and one more thing about that, like uh, you know, we always uh, while we we're doing the protest, we always had the contact with Artsakh, mm -hmm. and lots of lots of lots. I can tell how many families they contacted to us. They, thank you for not you know, um, leaving us. You know, we yeah. believe in you. So, yeah. when you have that spirit and you really want to you know raise awareness, of course you go that extra mile. Of course, and that's what we did. But one more thing I want to really mention that it's very very important. Even though we closed the, like, you know, 134, we always had one line open for families, emergency, children, yeah. emergency mm -hmm. line. So we do respect what's going on in, yeah. a, in, a, you know, you know, in our society. But at the same time, um, we go that extra mile. It's a little radical in a way. But, you know, if we have to do something to raise awareness that yeah. people can really watch us, it's time. Yeah. We have so many news channels here. Yeah. And they're ignorant. You know, it just... Yeah, I, I can't understand that. Like, yeah. how much can you cover up? Yeah. Civil disobedience. Yeah. That's what it's. So about. we did, but at the same time, like you know, we kept we kept one line, so yeah. you know, n you know, people could go through. If you know, many we met um, many families with children inside. You know, of course, you know, we just let them go. Yeah. Of course, no question. So spot. August nine, yeah, I was just checking the date. Yeah, we've yeah. been on streets so many so days. You think? I think uh, the criticism from our own people is, um, you know, we we have this thing in Armenians at the Amut Barra, which um, yeah. comes from, my God, the, you can go back 
centuries where we've been conditioned omota omota and not to inconvenience your neighbor or anything of that sort but you being an activist you like you said you stood up during the black lives matter situation yes. that was a human situation so uh, we keep thinking that you know um why would an american or a hispanic or anybody care about what's happening you know thousands and thousands of miles away but then you know what if when there's something going on and they're protesting we assist them we help that's them true. we stand for their human we're part rights of the yeah society that's the beauty of america but we're with all cars joining us like others non-armenians of course they have, we, at the, at the front us too, like Lat many Latinos, us. Yes. so people many people us. and you know what it was interesting while we were at the uh, office Greek people in front of the us, office yeah. Adam should, we've had so many non-Armenians just stopping by and we had conversations this woman she stopped I had at least like five people an hour conversation with each one educated like why are you guys here and I tell the story I go come I come from 1915 and, and yeah. I end the 2023 yeah. genocide so they're like Oh my God, really? So what are they doing about this? So people are interested to find out. It's just, you need to educate them. Yeah. I mean, we need to educate first our own, second, non-Armenians. Yeah. And it is very unfortunate that we, we do need to educate our own, but in a way, you know, we're patient. Of course. We, we're, we're, I'm still waiting for my people to come out I, I love Armenians. I, I have a saying, I always say in Armenian, yes, Siruma Mez, that, that's my slogan. Yeah. I love us. Yeah. And then one woman's like, why us? I'm like, when I say us, I'm I'm in it too. When I say yeah. I love you, I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> so I love us and I yeah. want us to stand together. Yeah. But we, we need to bring awareness, like freeway closure. It was amazing. And you know what? If it was inconvenient for someone, how about the kids that are starving in Artsakh and they have no food? We've been talking to the families almost every day, and one of one of the lives we've had while at the protest, she said, "We only have two cups of rice to cook and some buckwheat and some potatoes." The neighbor gave us. I'm like, I paused. I, I, I didn't know what to say. How? What do you say? No, you can't say anything. You can't. Yeah. And then I look around and I see. 300 400 500 amazing whoever came by the way thank you everyone but 500 armenians in in la where we have what close to with census we're like million without census more that's not enough and when you think about it like we're not uh we're not complaining about you know the basic stuff we're talking about the human life yeah and in america we go to work we come home Okay, we spend time with our children, watch movie and so on and on, right? We have social life, this and that. But we're talking about the human lives, 120,000. And at the same time, this black age is so dangerous. This is, this is insane what yeah. can happen because the outcome of that, I can say one, I want to say one thing, like the courage um, and the bravery approach they have the Artsakh people in Artsakh. Yeah, hundred twenty thousand people, eight months. If here we don't have food, like one two days, you know, we'll handle it, you know, differently. Yeah. But then when there's eight months, people are going through all this hard time, and they they they're literally directly and indirectly they're demanding self determination. Yeah. And I think like you know every single Armenian that is today is in a home, that is in a comfort zone. They have to put their comfort zone on the side and say, you know. This is for my country. This is for my land. This is for my heritage. This is Artsakh representing our Armenian ethnicity. Yeah. Because Artsakh Armenian safety. Same. Safety yeah. is what's more important now. So that's why, like, you know, it's priority right now to get up and then, you know, like, you know, really do the protest and anytime we organize anything new. So we'll unite, we'll be united and then we address this, you know, more like. Yeah. Just to add to that, uh, imagine um, after the freeway closure, we went to uh, Azerbaijani consulate, right? And we call it a blockade for a blockade. Yeah. Yeah. We were every night, well, at nights we had more people, but uh, overnight we've had 15 to 20 overnight staying. Just imagine if we had 10% of diaspora in LA standing. 5,000, 6,000, 10,000. Standing with us. Six nights blockading the entire building where not only 
We have a Zuri consulate. We have another seven countries. Can you imagine what kind of protest, what kind of, what message. Kind of awareness, and what kind of message, massive message yeah. it would have create? So when everyone asks me, what the protest do? I'm like, you need to come to find out. You need to come to create a message. If you're not there with me standing, yeah. I, I, I can't catch the helicopter's attention by just one person standing there. Of but course. if we're standing 10,000 of us, we've had 10 of helicopters flying. What is it, guys? What, what What is it? What is it that we can't get people to commit? What, our people. I, um, I, I personally cannot. Listen, I, I, uh, I'm, you know, one of those people where I've missed a few of those things, but there is a reason why we're here now. We're trying to bring everything together. Yeah, we need to talk um, about this. We need to analyze. Again, the excuse we hear is, oh, uh, we have kids. It doesn't work with I our schedule. Yeah. I, <laughs> I have three kids. I haven't yeah. been home for 12 days. If there I you can go. do it, I think others can. What it is is people don't, uh, like they think that that couple of hours when they come there, you know, you're not asking for them to 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 no, you know, give up their lives. Or what it, yeah, take shifts and, and switch. Support us at night because we've had this committed 10 to 20 young, young and, and David's age, obviously. Yeah, they were supervising the kids. We never left them alone. But you should see this young these are our future. Yeah. These kids are our future. If you don't teach them now how to yeah. stand up and fight, uh, we're going to lose the entire generation. Yeah. Well, the, the biggest other problem we have is um, uh, that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know our own history. Exactly. Um, they don't know the struggles that our culture has gone through. Um, so when you try to tell them even edu even about the genocide, a lot of people don't know our own, our own people don't know the details of the genocide. They just hear genocide, you know, 1915. Never if you again. ask them, That's yeah, never saying. again. That's if you ask them, how did it start? Why did it start? Uh, what took place? How did all this stuff happen? Most of them don't know. So it's, it's very, it's very sad. So we need to educate them about it and exactly. for them to understand that what's hap what happened then how it started is pretty much happening right now with Artsakh and it never it's ended actually, it's it's the reality. movies repeating yeah. and and it's the same same agenda same protocol that they're going okay. through scenario everything yeah. it's and and you know we need to educate our youngsters to understand what it is not just go out there and yell genocide 1915 never and again that's not going to do anything understand what you're fighting for and the reason you are in a diaspora, the reason we have a diaspora is because, because of, of that genocide. genocide. Yeah. The I'm reason we have genocide. There you go. We we all are. Yeah. And the reason why we have two dialects is because of the genocide. You know, a lot of people don't understand this. There's a divide between Western Armenian, Eastern Armenian. Well, they did it. That's that was their goal. They divided us with our own language. Yes. So there's so much involved here, and people need to understand this. Um but what I'm going to do is, uh, Mike's here, he's waiting to join us, but I wanted to uh, mention something. When I was in, in, in Armenia, we'll get back to the protests and everything. When I was in Armenia, I was, um, uh, you know, when I was traveling, I met uh, a few people who were actually, um, uh, they were involved, they were part of the war, uh, the 44-day war, and they uh, came up with this amazing program where they train young uh, kids from like 14, 15, 16, 17 who are going to end up going to the military. And what they do is they train them to be ready soldiers already. So when they get there, the, the Armenian military itself doesn't have to worry about these kids because they're ready to go. Um, the the title of their organization is BOGA. Um, and, and I met there, uh, I traveled with him actually, and I just wanted to show a quick video about them. And um, they are um, trying to raise funds right now for a vehicle that's gonna help them during um, times where they themselves go as volunteers to fight, to be able to get to the mountains and, and you know. So I, I wanted to show this video real quickly. Uh, Mike, you ready to join us soon? Yeah, yes, all right, give me a second. Um, all right, let's go to the video.
Hey everyone, um, I am here at BOGA. Uh, BOGA is a uh, training center where they train young kids, both boys and girls, um, from the age of 14 all the way up to 18, um, to basically be ready when they go to the army. As you know, in Armenia, it is mandatory to serve in the army uh, after, from the age of 18 uh, for two years. So this is a, a great center. I've met these guys through uh, another friend and they're doing some great work and helping these kids to basically be ready when they get there. Um, and that actually helps the army itself so they don't have to um, waste more time on trying to train them to become good soldiers. They're already ready. Um, so uh, I want to introduce you guys to the founder of Boga. Now I'm going to speak in Armenian and we'll put subtitles in the bottom so you guys uh, can understand what he is saying. All right, so uh, this is Onik Baboyan. He is the founder of Boga. He's an amazing human being. Um, we have actually traveled together and um, he was a volunteer during the 44 day war. Uh, he has a lot of experience and he is the one who trains these young kids to be ready for the army. Um, Բոլորսում <gülüyor> Չերմուկի <gülüyor> 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 Okay. Հիմա Okay. <laughs> Doing the part metzi for Arten Ahagin Yeritas of Nerkan, or a Zer Consortna training its heto, Arten Banakumen, Virangshat Gera Zansen Banakum, Mikanioki and Tungelen, Vasin Sarxian, Mikish Karas Partmester. Arten Yeritas of Nerkan, or a Banakishat Kera, Bavakanit Arbe, Inkas Teselem. The summon always near to Yes, 
Concentration Non-profit organization. Yet once Karan says Okne, for the reason that Duk Nord me had project to break, because we after making a connect, we are going to ask him to share the parts. And a shoot has to be Zina Materke, Mikish Tramasin. As by the way, make a drama have a connect, make a zerk belu ama, or we could say a naive chokati kasma or salmon connect. Հանապատասխան <laughs> 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 Hollywood <laughs> Parta <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, so everybody uh, will put the link how to support Poga. Um, whatever you can, uh, any small amount will help. Like I said, they're working on the project, which is to raise money to get that vehicle and then plus the weaponry that they'll need. Uh, again, this is a great organization. I've learned a lot about them. Um, so, uh, if you are interested, you can uh, click on the link and uh, support Boga. Only Shunakala.
Oh, all right, we we're back. Oh, okay, guys. Sorry, take we had a take, take two. All right, Mike. Two. Mike is back. Um, um, what I was what I was asking was, are there other organizations that are functioning like them? And is this kind of like sparking some sort of movement with... Yes, there's there's other ones. There's one that's called Tigran Mets. There's one that's called... It's not uh, a bad name. Uh, there's one Vol that's called Voma. Yeah, yeah, they're doing... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're independent on their own and they fund it themselves. Uh, like I said, this project, they're trying to raise money. They... Uh, on, on behalf of Medical Center, we donated $500 and they have another, I think, 2000 left to be able to have the funds to purchase this vehicle. It's very important. Uh, during the uh, Jedmuk situation, they were there fighting. And wow. um, they, they, one of the biggest problems was, uh, they had was trying to get weaponry through those mountains. I mean, if you've been to Jedmuk, you know how, what it's we the road. Yeah. Uh, yes, oh, we're going to talk about already. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you guys know how difficult it is to get up there. So, um, but yeah. again, uh, scan that QR code, help if you can, any amount guys, it could be $5, $10, $20 or whatever your heart desires, help them out. Uh, we're doing that as well. So, um, Mike's back. So I have some assistance now with, so I can produce the show easier. Yeah. <laughs> but paddle, let's yeah, go. There is, yeah. So, um, let's get back to talking about uh, once you guys start, uh, once you did the blockade for blockade, um, six nights, uh, people staying over, like you talked about the young uh, kids uh, helping you guys out. What was the result? Can we talk about that? Well, um, actually, we saw the results after the freeway closure and it kind of carry on to the blockade for blockade as a Rajani consulate. Uh, well, we were able to meet with Adam Schiff after the freeway closure in person meeting, very productive meeting. That was one of the big wins we've had. Yeah. Um, one of our team members, uh, Gurgen, met with him in person. They've discussed a lot of the issues. And uh, after that, he released an amazing letter, very, very strong. I don't know if you guys read it. It's an, it's on SoCal's page if you guys wanna go read it. it it's, it's amazing. It talks about all the points. Um, it's uh, directed to uh, President Biden, and we kind of use that letter as a sample, and we're talking to other politicians and elected off officials. Be like, look, this is a sample. It won't hurt to do, you know, more letters because yeah. more letters, more pressure. So that was big win. We've had all other politicians contacting. Paul Kikorian came up. Uh, Arjun Nazarian came. Art is always with us. Uh, the mayor of Burbank. It's like. We've we saw a lot of movement and a lot of uh, politicians starting approaching and talking about it, opening a door. And as we were talking, like, look, I think the time came that we work side by side. We don't need to do this. I don't want to do this. Yeah, I don't want to do this. No, to I attention. honestly don't want to spend nights sleeping on the streets when my kids worry at night. Like, where are you, mom? You know, we don't want to do this. We're we're professionals. We're not street people. But if the time came to do that, then hey civil disobedience that's what we need to do we're all going for it so we saw great results after the freeway closure and then one day we spend on Artsakh street just to regroup and plan our next move and we decided what else if not the azari concert they're the ones who blockade it so we went with the message blockade for blockade and we took the entire front of the building i, I, I want to pay attention to this all these years we've done protests by Azeri consulate, many years. We were never able to go up to the stairs in front of the door and protest there. Never. That area. Never. That yeah. area was always blocked. So yeah, I remember. Time, yeah. We, we put the tent. We put any our chairs, speakers. We're like, that's it. We're here. Proper we invasion. The doors. Yeah. We put all the signs on their doors. Genocide. Silence is genocide. A lot of messaging, a lot of messaging. And we actually stood there and we're like, this, this entrance is closed. Go around if you want to. Obviously, they never came to work. I think they never came to work. But was that was that on a Sunday night? We started. Or, uh, I No, wait. Because the blockade started, was on a Friday night, was it, was it not? If I remember. Con we started at Adam Schiff's at Sunday night and then okay. we were there five days, one day regroup and then. August 9 was the freeway, so I would say August 10 we started uh, yeah. blockade for blockade. We've had me media there, they came. Um, but what I saw after this movement, 
lot of other diaspora communities like in in different worlds they started reaching out they've been using our flyer without our permission obviously but it's okay i mean if you want to start a movement and just go out there and scream like we did in different part yeah, of the world a, please do inspiration please do uh, but just yell the right message <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm happy to yeah. see we woke up a lot of Armenians around the world, which which was amazing. It's still um, le from Lebanon, Kazakhstan, Australia, London, New York recently. Um, there, there's so many. Brazil. There, there's so many. I can't remember the names, but uh, amazing. And one of the nights while we were at the Zeri Consulate, we made all this, um, I'm sure you guys know of the UN mm -hmm. uh, meeting, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, the emergency meeting we have held. So we, 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 we prepared all this poster saying, uh, stop genocide. Yeah. And we went to France, right? Yeah. UK, China in front of them. And we just put those big banners there and asking them, please just, just stop genocide. Yeah. Just stop Artsakh genocide. That's, that's kind of what I wanted to ask you next sure. is, um, okay, you got the attention of local councilmen, councilwomen, right? Yes. Um, what in your, so far what you guys know, what what's reached the international community or international council women, council men, or whatever their title may be? Have you guys gotten any pull from that? Uh, nothing from them yet. Yeah. Um, from our local politicians, we asked for a press release. Mm -hmm. I was talking to, we were the team entire, we were talking to Paul Kikorian and I reminded him um, about 2020. I'm sure you guys remember he did it, this yes. whole nice press conference in front of the city hall. So mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. it's time for us to have one now because this is yes. urgent. And um, we had one yesterday actually, and Pan Armenia put it together. We were very grateful we were there. Um, it's awareness. I mean, there's only a few politicians and, you know, there's, there's, only, there's only so much they can do, but there are all the other 435 of them besides yeah. Adam Schiff and yeah. there, there's so many of them. We need to go. If I, if we physically need to go after each one, I told my, I'm ready. Well, listen, California's got what? 50, 53, yeah. 53 or 54, something, something like that. Right. We have, it's still a small yeah. number, but we have another sure. 400. If yeah. we have to go one by one, Dave, we're ready. Yeah, right. We've been talking about yeah. We've been <laughs> planning this. So, um, this movement is not going to stop. It's going to go bigger and bigger and bigger. We're planning something for the Saturday, but I'm not going to say anything right now. Okay, in process of because it's in the process and uh like we, we didn't announce freeway until last minute because we don't want to that was another question i wanted to ask is how did how long before you guys managed to organize well that? we knew ahead of time what we we're doing but we, sure. we don't mention it we just put on a fly destination to be announced yeah because we don't want cool. <laughs> no because we don't want to get there no, and the whole freeway and the yes. are blocked before we it's even get kind there of so and and believe it or not when we do rally like we did rally from the church to different locations it's amazing as we drive with the flags and you know with this like a lot of people come yeah. from the streets and they start joining us and we 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 let's say we drive with 30 cars and then we end up with like i'm gonna be late 50 for 60 cars. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's amazing and, yes yeah the first one we did from the street get the bill money together yeah, I mean, we're well, ready for everything. Listen, well. in all reality, we are ready for everything. Yeah, let's go. We even made this video. Uh, some of us said we're ready to get arrested. Hey, you know, if they can go and and and, and took stuff from yeah. YSL store and just walk away, <laughs> I mean, I think we could get away by closing the freeway yeah. at this point. Valid point. <laughs> so yeah, that that's how that's how much we're all motivated and. There is no personal agenda. There is no politics. It. I love our group the way they're so devoted, and it's just the fire is yeah. inside. And now I see the fire in diaspora. I mean, I want to see a little more. I think it's coming. We just yeah. we just can't stop. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a slow pace, but I'm seeing it as Snowball well. Effect. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. it's it's gonna it's gonna. It's I think up. in the next few weeks, hopefully sooner, it's it's gonna pick up really fast because I think people are realizing that you said every day counts now and every day we're getting news from Artsakh where you're just like I, I, I can't believe this is enough yeah, enough this, is this enough people are strong um, they're, they're amazing amazing we talk to them on daily basis like I spoke with I don't want to mention names last no names, but, names. Yeah, yeah, let's like, talk about what they're saying from Artsakh people to 
uh, a little higher up doesn't matter whoever you they're like we're not gonna give up this is our land this is armenian Good we're armenians we, we'll survive and yeah. you know what they told me don't worry we'll be fine we're just we're just watching you guys and but seeing you guys out there fighting for us and we feel your presence like right, right yeah. next to us it gives us strength to survive another day yeah. i'm getting goosebumps as i'm talking but these people are amazing people, you know my armenian yeah, yeah you know that, that that feeling like when when you know people are cheering you on and you know people have your back they keep us going it makes you powerful it makes it, us going and going and going yeah. and further and doing everything possibly to just to give them that hope. You know, when they watch on on any on our Instagram, they're following us everywhere. They're yeah. like watching all yeah. the lives. They're like, by seeing you guys out there and yelling Artsakh, Artsakh, we feel your presence here, and we know we're not alone. And one of the guys I spoke with, uh, they sent us a video. He at the end of the video, he's like. Please don't leave us alone. He's speaking in Armenian, but yeah. as I was listening, that please don't leave us alone. I'm like, how can we? How can yeah. we? We're not gonna leave them alone. No, we're we're standing with them very strong till the end, and we're not gonna stop fighting. I'm I'm very optimistic. I think yeah. we're gonna win this one at least. Yeah. Hey, uh, goal, you right? have to be optimistic. That's the goal, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. otherwise, what are we doing on the streets? Yeah. We want to fight and win the fight. Yeah. So hey, you might you might have some ups, uh, you might have some downs, but optimism is the only and hope. That's what's gonna make you at the end of the day get to that finish line exactly. to your goal, right? So you can't give up. Now, real quickly, one of the main reasons why we wanted to do this also is to promote tomorrow. There's mm -hmm. a a protest happening from the Azerbaijan consulate on Wilshire all the way to the UN building, correct? Uh, federal building. Federal building, sorry. Yes. Federal building. Let me bring up that flyer. Yeah, this is a good subject to talk about yeah. because... Yeah, this is the flyer. So this is uh, put together by uh, AYF West. Um, AYF stands for Armenian Youth Federation. Um, yeah. These are the young kids. And again, they're organizing, but it doesn't matter if it's AYF West, East, uh, North, South, doesn't matter what, what political thing. It's just this is their organization. They're doing it together and we're supporting it. Yes, um, Anush is supporting it. Yes. Davide is supporting it. Everybody's supporting it. We're going to be there at six o'clock. So if you're in the LA area, I understand it's Friday. You want to get home from work, whatever, leave work early, go over there, grab your kids, go over there. It doesn't matter. Everybody, please, please, please show up. Let's show them what we did during the 2020 war and what we did during the 100th anniversary yeah. of the oh my genocide. God, I, see that I posted on my Instagram. Like, can we do this? Uh, like, I think we can. I yes, think we can, we but we need people to, to show up. So again, um, you guys uh, can... Spread the word. Yeah, spread the word. It's 6 p.m. Uh, tomorrow it starts at 6 p.m. We start at... The address is right there, 11766 Wilshire Boulevard in L.A., and we're going to go all the way to the federal building, U.S. federal building. Um, and just to add to that quickly, um, you should never look at the flyer like who's doing it. Seriously, this just this go. is if you if it aligns with your beliefs, if you if you feel like this is what you need to do, if this that's, that's the message that you support, you need to be there regardless. It's it. We need to stop uh, like reading the lines like oh who organized it? Yeah. Armenians organize it, and that's, that's it. it. Yeah. You like the messaging, you support the cause, you go. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I know yeah. we need to stop yeah, that. This, this, this to stop this the nonsense. And, factions. And the factions yeah. and whatnot, like that all that nonsense. Yeah, the, the, the factions are them. really, really yeah. annoying. Yeah. I, just, like, I feel really old. bad. Like they need to contact us. Like, can you guys come and support? Them? Like, you don't need to ask. We're gonna be there. Yeah. You don't need to ask. We are going to be there, yeah. regardless of organization or whatever. I believe in that cause. I want to support it. I'm gonna be there. Yeah. And that's every, how it needs to be from now on. Every Armenian um, is supposed to think this way. I represent Armenia, diaspora, and Artsakh. Mm -hmm. Every Armenian. Mm -hmm. We cannot, you know, separate, say, okay, I'm Armenian from Iran, from Lebanon, yeah. from Syria. Uh, I live in Canada. I live in America. I'm not there. It's not related to me. I feel like every Armenian, if they ask, like, what is Artsakh for me? What is Armenia for me? What is Armenian diaspora means for me? Yeah. If we can focus on this, 
you know, think. And then if each person would ask themselves, like, what am I? What am I representative? Yeah. representing? What is my ethnicity? We should be more clear about like our demand, our understanding of what we inherited as an Armenian yeah. comparing to other nations. We do not have the advantages like other countries has. Yeah. But at the same time, we cannot say, okay, so we don't have those these advanta- advantages, then let's just, you know, just be in a corner and then not to show our service. Yeah, and become a gypsy one day, right? Yeah. Yeah. No- we cannot um, agree with that. Like I stated on my speeches many times, I cannot comprehend, I cannot agree. And I don't think any good um, patriots of Armenia and Artsakh will agree to see Artsakh part of the Azerbaijan. We can't. And I can't like it's unimaginable. Exactly. It's unimaginable. So, so, so Unacceptable. The point I'm trying to make is like I think every human person, Armenian human person more, they should stand for what their ancestors fight for. Yeah. Since nineteen eighty seven, nineteen eighty eight and more nineteen ninety two, we had the most difficult time as an Armenian. Uh, with the war, with everything Armenia was going through. But what did we do? As a united we fought and we won the war. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, uh, we lost this one. However, it doesn't mean we lost everything. Yeah. We lost the battle. It's just the battle. That's exactly what I'm yeah. trying to say. It's but unfortunate, if we can, but nonetheless. Yeah, but if every one of us, you know, we kind of take, you know, personal responsibility to stand up united and stand up with the Armenian values and understand and appreciate what our soldiers did, especially the last 5,000 young kids that died. Um, They died so we can leave. Yeah. Now, they died so we can have Armenia and we can have Artsakh. Can't let them down. So if right now we don't do our part, then what do we do? What do we tell our kids tomorrow? Exactly. So that was the thing that, you know, um, we do what we do right now. And I think like it's every Armenian responsibility supposed to be in the home to teach their children, to teach their parents, their brother, their sister. Yeah. Like this protest is not for political issues, political views. This protest is for Armenia. To save our time. And I believe 10 million Armenian, if we could gather 1 million to stand up in the world and demand uh, whatever they leave, the politicians, hey, look at the situation. This is... 2023, we cannot have the third genocide with yeah. two related to Armenia. We cannot. We cannot let this yeah. happen. If I it's can, every one of us we have responsibility yeah. for it. If I can add to that, um, a lot of people forget. Uh, if you go back to the first genocide um, before, like everything started, the same thing was taking place, and our own ancestors, unfortunately. First of all, they didn't have social media. They didn't have the means to report, but they stood by and did nothing. And look what happened. And that's kind of the same thing. If we stand around and do nothing, uh, a lot of people, you know, the the hardest thing as a human being is to imagine what 120,000 is. We throw it around like a number, 120,000, 5,000, this, that. I always say, close your eyes and try to imagine 120,000 bodies. Wish we could get that many people on the street and do a video. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Imagine laying them down, right? Yeah. Well, so uh, well, well a see. solid comparable would be the, one of the marches uh, during the 44-day war. Oh, we were 150-something. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So imagine, imagine drone that many people. shots, yeah. helicopter the video, shots, right? right? Yeah. But Think about that. Here's the thing. Um the 5,000 boys that you mentioned when I went to Yerablur and I did post a video. I know it's tough to watch, um, but if you can't watch it, I had a hard time filming it. But when you when it hits you and you realize, you see those flags, those faces and the dates and everything, it's just and unimaginable. The faces, the young kids, young, the young generation. Kids, yeah. Um, I've been there too. It, it, it's, it's so overwhelming. And, and then you realize... Oh my God! Seeing the parents there, uh, you know, there's parents who spend the night there. Oh, I know. I, I, and and it's if you're every Armenian, you need to every Armenian needs to go see that to understand what we lost and what these kids uh, fought for. And like you said, we can't let them down. We can't let them down. Um, but um, we I have. Like, uh, if I may say yes. Yeah, um, 
I think every rational Armenian, if, you know, pause for a moment and thinks like, uh, picks one soldier that got killed in the war zone and kind of thinks like, okay, this young kid got killed. What was his last thought and what was his last hope that the living people will do? Yeah. If they think like that, mm -hmm. then take personal responsibility because they're alive. Imagine if these people, if they didn't fight, if we didn't have these 5,000 soldiers in the, in the war zone, they would be already in, in Yerevan. Yeah. So that means like now if we don't protect what we have, the next thing will be Sunik, and next thing will be Sevan, yeah. and then yeah. slowly, slowly we will lose what we have. Last yeah. well, 1,000 years, we've been losing our land from ocean to ocean Armenia, and what do we have? And this is like the most strategical locations we have right now. If we give this way, that means we don't have Armenia anymore. I don't believe we will have it. So that's why we cannot agree with this. Um, we're going to have uh, a few of your other team members join us here. Uh, we're going to have Robert and uh, Alyosha, right? If I'm yes. saying that yeah. correctly. Yes. Uh, Alyosha is from Artsakh. Yes. Right? Um, so as soon as they join, we'll bring him on um, and they can say a few words. Actually, uh, it looks like Alyosha is ready. Let me uh, take this off the screen. Oh, Robert's ready too. Who do we bring on first? You guys pick. I can't. I, <laughs> bring them all. I can't pick, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. You know what? Uh, Robert, uh, one of you, who wants to go first? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, that's it. Robert, Robert. Robert. Okay. All right, we'll bring Robert on. Um, go. Hey, Rob, can you hear us? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Thanks for joining us. Good evening, guys. Thank you for having me. No problem. How are you? Good, 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 good. Um, very, very interesting topics you guys are covering, and, and thank you for having our, our team, um, part of our team. Uh, we are we are about, I think, 12 people, right, guys? 12? 13. 12 of us. 13? Yeah. And, and, and one of the good things about this team is, guys, that, you know, it, it's very diverse. You know, it, it, before 2020, you would never get these people in, in the same room together because there's so many so differences in opinions, <laughs> dif difference of difference in opinions, <laughs> affiliations. Um, but but you know we came together at, when after the um, after the uh, the blockade started, and and the, then the, and the initiative was put put forward by Alyosha, who's who's from Artsakh, um, and uh, we we met at his office. It started with a very large group, and then um, there was. So a lot of people didn't kind of uh, fit and they, they didn't want to be there for the right reasons. So, you know, it came down to just a 12, 13 of us. And that, that's, that, that has remained the core group since, since December, uh, January. So I'm very, very happy and privileged to be part of uh, such, a, such, a, such a great uh, group. Um, you know, we have, you know, a, we have a doctor, we have a lawyer, we have a businessman, we have an activist, entrepreneurs, you know, so we have a very, it's a very diverse group. We have members of, you know, 130 year old organizations, Armenian organizations. And um, so, it, you know, everybody brings different uh, experiences, different uh, uh, both life experiences and professional experiences and activism to the group. And, um, and we've been utilizing those, those resources for the past you know, few months uh, to, uh, to really kind of wake up our diaspora because the diaspora is asleep. Uh, and it's an, and it's an intentional sleep. It's not like you know we try to make a lot of excuses for the diaspora, and we have to stop making those excuses. We have to we, you know we make the excuses of oh 2020 oh everybody is disappointed because they donated two dollars to the Armenia Fund. That's an excuse. That's an excuse that you want to justify your inaction. If that's the case, every single one of us, including you guys who are doing this podcast, you know shouldn't be doing this podcast. Should be doing something else. If we all make that excuse, we can, we, every single one of us can make that excuse, but it's an easy way just to say, okay, you know what? Um, and I'm just going to go my merry way. Yeah. Uh, if, if you guys, you know, spend a few minutes with us when we're on Artsakh street or somewhere else, when Armenian people pass, pass by us, they look at us with disgust. Like our own people look at us with disgust. Like what are you guys pathetic people doing on the street? You know, women, women were yelling at us when we're, when we're driving from Burbank to block off the freeway. They're looking at us with disgust. 
the cuss words they were using against us. Why? Because we've left our families, we left our jobs, we left our businesses, we left our livelihoods to, to, do, to do what? To fight for our people. We are a very result-driven race. We think if we go to one protest and the Latin Quarter doesn't open, oh, what's up, good night, The same thing with the 2020 war. Some people bought sleeping bags, some people sent money, but they were looking for a specific result. And they didn't get that result. They're like, okay, you know what, check off, we're gonna go our merry way because they were waiting for those guys who were ill-equipped, ill-experienced, outnumbered to win the great war for them. Because we always love celebrating wins, but not losses. And when, 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 the, when the blockade started on December 14th, 18 of us went to the Azeri Consulate and we said, we're gonna stay here tonight. We're calling on all of our brothers and sisters to come and join us in solidarity. This is not a one day thing. This is gonna go on guys. This is, this is the start. This is what the lobby, the Azeri lobby came up with that, hey, let's lose, use echo activism, which is a trendy topic around the world. You know, the Azeris are idiots. They don't come up with this. People in Washington, people in, in Boston, people in, in, in California, these high power lobby firms come out with these mm -hmm. messaging and, and, and these ideas and these, as, and these projects. And we knew this was going to be a long term thing. And but everybody was just laughing it off. Oh, you're well, warmongering and you guys are, you know, causing unnecessary panic. Uh, when I went to meet with the uh, Western Diocese, uh, the prelacy, the ARS, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. It's a temporary thing. You guys are overreacting. And now nine months later, they come and do this grand gesture of having all these political people out there yesterday. And oh, we're here for over nine months. We were begging you. The people, 120,000 people were begging you to be there. Robert, think of, it like Robert think of it like this. You, you guys made this happen. It's because of you guys. So you got to look at the positive. I, I, and I get it. That absolutely. And, and absolutely. You absolutely love. Right, Vahijan. And, 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 and the, the, we're happy we're able to do that wake-up call. And we're, we're happy that a lot of these organizations felt overshadowed, that you know, a bunch of people came together and started blocking off streets, sleeping in front of consulates, and, and, and gave them the wake-up call that they needed. So that, we're very happy about that. But what, what, what I don't want our community to, to, to feel or to, uh, to understand or, or take away from these optics is that I don't want them to have false sense of hope or security that, hey, look, 15 people showed up in front of the Azeri consulate for a 45 minute uh, a PR op, you know, a press conference, and then they just left with a virtual a hunger strike. I don't want people to think, okay, look, now the, uh, the, the diocese is involved, Schiff is involved, uh, Sherman's involved. Now we don't have to do anything. Let's just sit and wait no. because the big boys are no. watching. So this is, this is exactly, that's the biggest wake up call that we have to keep on pushing. Every single day we're trying to come up with different ideas. We're, we're collaborating with different uh, organizations because we cannot take our eye off the ball. We did that th for 30 years and look what happened. They became stronger, they became more united while, while we drifted apart while we you know focused on you know more irrelevant things and look at the state of our country and Arta. yeah yeah well um we're proud of everything you guys have done and we're proud of you robert robert you've been involved with a lot of this uh activism from day one i mean i came across your page during the war yeah. and um we've you know i've gotten to know you and you're an amazing person who's done so much a lot of people don't know how much this man has done for Armenia, for Artsakh. Um, you guys put together the the barricades that uh, you guys donated to all the uh, borders. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit, that program you guys did? Uh, yes, and um, Vahejan, you and I spoke when you were in Armenia. You know, yeah. I, got a, I got a text in the middle of the night from Vahe, and uh, I called him <laughs> back within seconds. I said, you know, if he's there, he needs something. We, I called him and, you know, can't we can't discuss here what was discussed and stuff but you know you saw firsthand how fast things move in, yeah. in armenia and how yeah. fast we we're able to get stuff done and you know when when you realized the, the I, I i to be to be very transparent with you guys i never wanted to be in this position i never wanted to be in this position but when the 2020 war started i always had this misconception that there were these great armenian powers looking out for our Same best here. interest in our community Same. 
that there were these, yeah, you know, you know billion dollars. You know, they're just huge people smarter than me, more educated than me, and that they had this handled. And I, I was the person who actually just stayed, stand aside. When 2020 war happened and thereafter, I realized, dude, th those people don't exist. That's all a facade. And it's, it's people like me, like you guys, who are spreading awareness every day, teaching everybody about you know, the Armenian history. It's up to us, individual in the people like me, like you, like Anush, like David, like Alyosha, Google. It's up to us to, to make it work in Armenia, to, to make a difference. And we started with little projects during the war, which you know, we can't really discuss here. But what we do can discuss about the border project is that you know, um, after the war, the Armenian government realized that, okay, dude, we need to, we need cheap, uh, cheaper options to the, uh, uh, the building dice, you know, it's called the building dice, you know, like the, uh, the, the train systems and stuff. We need a cheaper option because every, every day we were losing um, uh, positions. You know, you can't spend hundred thousand dollars on a concrete position and then they come and take over like, just like they did in, in September of 2022. And then you're lost and you, you give away a 50,000 or hundred thousand dollar position. So they, we, they wanted to look at what, you know, what people, what the U S was doing in Afghanistan, what Russia was doing in, in Artsakh when the peacekeepers came in. One of those things was the UNESCO barriers, which is, which is, a, which is a, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really great cost effective uh, way of, you know, fortifying your positions. So, you know, we started talking to a number of manufacturers in Armenia and we, we, we can, you know, we got it down from $40 to like, uh, I think it's like 16 or $17. And we started mass producing them. And I think uh, between December, when we started of 2022 until today, we've delivered almost 10,000 of them. And we've covered the, the from Taush all the way to Yerask. So it, we've, we've, we've done the, the entire J, it looks like a J we've done. Um, and now we also have more now in reserves as, as you know, Vaj and uh, you and I spoke with some of the people and they said, hey, if they need it, call us, we'll deliver it. In addition to that, we, we, we deliver blocks, we deliver, uh, we help them uh, build underground uh, fortification in certain areas. Um, we do uh, sensors, we do sensors. So if enemies are approaching, there are sensors they put in. It's very simple, $10 sensors from Amazon. You get an alert on your phone that somebody's, um, you know, uh, uh, triggered a sensor. Uh, camera systems, I mean, just a lot of different stuff and other stuff that we can't we can't discuss here. I can't talk. Yeah. 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 But um, but it, it's 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 been it's been a privilege uh, uh, for for us to do that for our people in Armenia. And you know when when people always ask me like yesterday somebody approached me from a from a very powerful organization that said Where, which organization are you with? I said I'm not with an organization. She said so who are you? I said I'm Armenian. And she looked at me like I was an alien. And, and she's like, uh, like, but but you're dressed in a suit and tie. I said, I'm just coming from work. I'm like, what do you mean? If I'm in a suit and tie, I'm supposed to be part of an organization. <laughs> and this is like, this is this is one of the biggest organizations that we have in our community. And she's like, well, I wanted you, I wanted you to invite you to our office so we can talk. I'm like, so I can't come to your office because I'm, I'm not a part of an organization. And she was tongue tied. Like she didn't know how to answer back. I'm like, so I'm like, I want to come to your office, but I'm not part of an organization. I don't have a 501, I'm, 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 I'm just an Armenian. And every single Armenian needs to learn to stop at that. When you say I'm Armenian, you stop, stop. Don't, don't label, don't add a title, don't add an organization, don't add East or West, North, South, none of that stuff. Cause that's what polarizes, that what's, that's, that's what you know, alienates us from one another. Yeah. And, and, and when you just keep it as Armenian, just like we did with the 13 people that we have in our group, we kept it as Armenian. We don't, I don't care if you're from Dashnak Tutsun, I don't care if you're uh, Hinchak, I don't care. If, if your core goal is to stand next to our soldiers, stand next to our brothers and sisters in Armenia, in Artsakh, then we can't do wrong together. But, but once we start bringing in the party affiliations, we're divided. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 that's that's one thing about what you guys did that I I love and appreciate is the fact that you emphasize on the fact that this is about being Armenian it has nothing to do with yeah. political ties, and yeah. I think it is resonating really really well. Uh, uh, you again, I don't know why I I see it. I have this feeling, and I'm kind of like. I don't know if it's intuition or whatever it Getting is. Getting the energy. It's like it's coming. Like the, the <laughs> yes. snowball is coming. It's gonna it's gonna get bigger and bigger. And, and you you guys cannot uh, you know get off course and keep preaching that it doesn't matter where you are from. If you are Armenian, like you said, North, East, West, AGBU, this that it doesn't matter. 
if you're Armenian and this matters to you, you then, you, then you care, you need to be there. Yes. If you don't care, then I, you know what? God, God, bless. God, God bless. Go enjoy your, you know, Horovats. Before so, any political parties, political yeah. agenda, political um, membership people had, they were Armenians. Yeah. That's the first thing. We're, yeah. Our ethnicity is Armenian, so we have to stand for that. Yeah. Well, I was labeled a lot of things, Dashnaks and this and that, and I'm like, yeah. oh, really? Is that what you care about? I could be whoever you want me to be. Just yeah. come and stand with me because I'm Armenian at well, the end of the day. Apparently, I'm a Nikolakam because I'm wearing oh, yeah. Tzach we, is Armenian. We were called uh, Kochainakam because yeah, we were yeah, eating yeah. pizza. Tzach is Armenian. Uh, I mean, I that's, that's like a common theme all yeah. across the globe. Yeah. All that so nonsense. You know, sad that we're such a power like armenians we have the greatest history i'm you know history i don't even, and we're like the most um i love us and and to label us with i love this person or this person or this person is just so so beneath us it's it's yeah. not us yeah. it's it, it's very low class of us like we, we shouldn't be loving a person like nikolakon or kocha i'm like come on stop loving a person it's like right just, away from the right? label like yeah, right. it's a label, like a label. Like, yeah. label. No, no, why don't we just say we're Armenians? I have an Armenian DNA. No matter how, no matter what you do, it's in my vein. It's in my vein until you cut my vein and and and, yeah. and you just like, I bleed to death. That's it. And I'm not Armenian. I, I'm still Armenian, but you know, it's like you'll be, come re on. You'll be remembered as an Armenian. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the, the thing. You need to be remembered as Armenian because if your kids ask tomorrow, mom or dad, uh, when when. God forbid, I don't even want to say it, but when the Artsakh thing happened, I don't even want to say it. What were you doing? Were you helping? Of course. Were you, were you active? Did you do anything? Did you donate? Uh, did you go to the protest? I saw, saw a lot of videos and this this guy, Rob, yeah, was there. Case, right? <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah. kids going to ask questions. My kids ask questions every day. What are you going to answer to your kids? That you just went to parties. The sleepless nights. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And forgot about Artsakh and you didn't do your part? Yeah. Do your part. You can't come to protest, send a friend. You can't come, uh, send the email, uh, do Twitter ton, post, repost, share. There's hashtags. too many ways. This internet too many ways. Yeah. Yeah. So many ways you can help with. Just call, a, call a non-Armenian non friend, right? We all have non-Armenian friends and chat like, you look, I don't feel good. Why? Because Artsakh is in blockade. They're like, what? Like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, but I want to share it, that with you. It know? works. It works. Believe yeah. me, one it spark, it works. So be active that and be united. And in anybody, one. anybody, Otar, Otar, Jorovurta, anybody. Yeah, they they, of course they do. If they, have, if they have like minimum one or two Armenian friends, they start paying attention to everything that's we going on. On the freeway, yeah. they were like, oh, guys, yeah. let go. Yeah. Remember? The, the yeah. Hispanic yeah during guys. during the during the 44 day war I was walking next to three British guys that happened to live here in the states like well, we just have a bunch of Armenian friends this is, all right cool they were yeah. there the we need time. to be the yeah. nation that yeah. everyone should be proud yeah. of us yeah um Robert um I know you're gonna be there tomorrow too during the march but um, before we we let you go what message do you have for the diaspora for the Armenian youth for everybody, um, wh what can you say to get people going that that to share that positive energy uh, and 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 to bring unity again one more time, just w the way we united during the war, uh, and be even more powerful. I think you're muted, buddy. Yeah, mute. I yeah. think you're muted. I'm sorry. There we go. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said. Um, you know, most important thing is we have to start being selfless. You know, a lot of us are, you know, we live in a society where a lot of people are, most people are very selfish. So it's time for us to kind of start, you know, start making little sacrifices. Every single person, every single Armenian in Los Angeles can take 20, 30 minutes from their day and come to a protest or, you know, jump on a, jump on an initiative like the video we had, all we asked for people to do for 20 seconds to sign a petition, simple petition. France is uh, about to uh, uh, submit a resolution to the, uh, to the U.S. Security Council. So, so those letters are, are very, very important because we're trying to show the world that, you know, a diaspora of 10 million Armenians are very concerned about Artsakh. Yet we have 13,000 letters sent to the U.N. So small initiatives like that, small steps like that are very important. 
And it, it all comes with personal sacrifices and, you know, small, small things matter. You know, it, when people think that we have all the time in the world, you know, to be at these protests, to do this, but, you know, we have, we do have families, we do have obligations, we do have bills, we do have jobs and businesses and school children. Um, and just to share something private with you on, on Thursday, when we were at the, when we were at the protest, my son was hospitalized and I told my wife, make sure he's, he, he's transported to uh, St. John's hospital in San, Santa Monica. So I can be close. I was two blocks away from the Azari consulate. So I said, make sure you, you know, you don't go to children's hospital, you bring him directly to St. John's so I can be close. Cause I have, I have an obligation to these people that are here, five, 600 people and things were getting volatile with the police. I said, I want my son to be close. I can go back and forth. And I was going back and forth to, from the hospital to the protest, hospital to the protest. And again, that's why, because I feel an obligation as an Armenian, I feel an obligation to my people, especially at a, at a difficult time like this. You know, even, you know, we have families, we have, we have jobs. We do have to make those personal sacrifices. And every single person, if they, if they take that upon themselves that I have to sacrifice for the greater good of my country, a country where my child can go and enjoy and see one day, and not only see it in Glendale at the new museum that's being opened up, then they have to start with making self-sacrifices. Well said. Well said. Um, we want to wish your family, your son, um, the best, uh, speedy recovery. Um, and, um, we will see you there tomorrow at the protest. Absolutely. I know you'll be there. Absolutely. I'll be there. Absolutely. Guys. Thank you so much. Thanks Robert. All right, guys. Take care. Well, that was one of your great team members, Robert Torosian. Um, for three years already. Yeah. Um, you guys should follow him on Instagram. Um, he is so passionate. He's so passionate. And um, I I know how much he does and he doesn't show it. You guys know that. Yes. Um, what you see on Instagram is, is such a small amount. And we all he don't post anything. Yeah. And all he, <laughs> he all Robert is trying to do is wake up people, wake up, not just Armenians, but non-Armenians as well. Um, we have another team member of yours, uh, Alyosha, who's going to join us now. Uh, we're going to bring him on the screen. And uh, Alyosha, can you hear us? Hey, everybody. How you Good. doing? Good. How's my voice? You guys hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit closer, maybe. We can hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right, perfect. Putting him to work. No, he's a low speaker, too. <laughs> it's, how you doing today? Good. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Vi. Thank you, Mike, for having us. Thank, Thank you for, for joining us. Light on our movement. Uh, I feel like my colleagues, my friends, like talked about everything. Uh, and I'll be just repeating what they said. So any specific questions that I can answer, maybe. Well, um, uh, why don't you talk about your experience? Like, how did you get involved into activism? I mean, you're you're just another regular person yourself. Uh, and what motivated you to get into the uh, to this? Uh, you know, as far especially with the Artsakh blockade. Uh, you know what? Uh, like as my friends mentioned it, so I was born in Artsakh raised in Armenia when I was 15 years old. So Artsakh war started back in 1990. So my parents were living in Armenia and so they decided instead of just going to protest, uh, be practical and it was family five. So they took their children. It was myself, 15 years old, my brother, uh, my sister seven and my brother one years old. So we moved back to our village where we came from. And the reason I'm saying this, it was village of 100 families, not even. And us going back there was just one more family, but what this meant to them during the war that there were some people that were leaving the war, uh, war zone, but having a family, and it wasn't only us, so there were uh, many cases like ours, like in different parts of all of us, but uh, this gave people hope 
and strength that they're not alone. And when this four years of war was going on in our South, so I'm saying this that every person living in diaspora, I want them to feel how much power they have. Say, we were looking up to Spurk, knowing that we have a strong Armenian diaspora that they stand behind us. Yeah. They stand, stand behind us. And no matter what, they're going to do something. So, uh, so this, will, this was our hope, and this was giving us strength to go forward. And there were a lot of times, even it was, the situations were much more difficult than it is today, trust me. But uh, because of this hope, because of the unity, we did w win the war back then. So when we're talking to people in Artsakh nowadays, and we see light in their eyes after what we did, uh, it is and this is what I'm trying to say and my probably the main message would be see we're all uh, scoping for our 5,000 kids young men that gave their life during the 44 day war they had the same hope that you know what this is my uh, sacred uh, this is my motherland and I'm going to defend every inch of this land and they were convinced that if something were to happen to them they have 10 million Armenians in their bag who is going to take care of their families this is very important and I want every Armenian to not take this lightly and they didn't doubt for a second that they're doing the right thing and selflessly giving their lives. But today, uh, out of that four or 5,000 men who died, like 1,600 of them were from outside. Half of them were young kids, no families, no kids yet, but the other half, they left wife, kids, families, and today they're starving. Imagine the pain this soldier feels in the heaven, looking down to the situation and seeing that, you know what, the hope he had that if something were to happen to him, his family wouldn't be forgotten. And seeing the situation that his kids and his wife are today. And I'm asking, I'm begging, each and every Armenian living in Spirit. Today, the sacrifice you're going to make is just what? A few hours a day to come and stand there just to show your solidarity. To show, like today, every single one of us is count. Like, often people think, you know what? There's already enough people there, so <laughs> they're going to do something. But now. Or they ask if there's a lot of people I'm coming, right? Yeah. Like, what does uh, that matter? I, yeah, it's like so, a social nonsense. Or they say yeah. nothing is going to be changed. Especially, my message is to those who live in the United States. We live in today's one of the most powerful countries in the world, and probably one of the only countries that can do something to change the situation in Artsakh. And in this country, our, our voices count, especially the elections are coming up. Yeah. You know what? We have to show numbers. Of course. Of course, See, our, if we our voices can get matter. Out, like of over hundred thousand people to commem commemorate the one hundred years of the genocide. Today, it's happening, guys. It, it is happening. Like yeah. we need to be out there, not only in the United States, all over the world. And from one side, this blockade and this situation is terrible, but then from the other side, it's an opportunity and probably the last one that we can use because. Every evidence is there, this to be count, uh, considered as genocide. And if we go out, if we get out and raise our voices around the world, we might be able to 
make those decision makers lean towards the independence of Artsakh. And there's uh, uh, the Kosovo case already, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and we can we can make them lean to those, uh, towards that direction if we do our part, if we get up. So I'm asking each and every Armenian living in Los Angeles, in New York, in wherever you are, in France, in Australia, in London. So get out, get out, guys. This is our last opportunity. I don't want to sound dramatic, but if we don't take action today, if we, God forbid, lose ourselves, we're not going to have Armenia anymore. Yeah. That, that is a reality that's the reality yeah. we will lose Sunik and then whatever's left over will be gone as well and this is something that will happen within 10 years it will and happen so fast very unfortunate. Um, this this podcast i think um like armenians who speak english they're gonna watch they're yeah, gonna listen of course right they're gonna hear it um i want to really ask them if they can choose each five foreign people to show them what's going on because we're not here to talk about politics we're here to say that you know human uh, lives matter human lives matter and um aliyev is guilty he's done so much he violated so many laws yeah and he's guilty in every single count to show that this is a real genocide and all these world politicians are silent complete silent all the news is silent and every Armenian right now, if also silent, then literally we're at risk to lose our identity, our heritages, our language, our location, uh, and our land and everything. Yeah. So I really want to encourage every single Armenian who watches this video this or hears this podcast, um, guys, this is the time to get up, take your wife with you, Take your children with you, take your dad with you, your uncle, whoever you have, and get up together because this is the last and the most important war we're going into. And if we all stand up together worldwide as an Armenian and get up together with United and go through this fight, I believe with 10 million people on this earth... We'll get attention. I mean, we get attention enough yeah. because... You know, we have in America 435 House of Representatives. I don't know which part don't support Armenian. I'm sure there, there are some. However, this country is a strong, powerful country. So is the other countries, European countries. And if any European Armenian watches this video or hears this podcast, please get up on the street, contact your politicians and really raise awareness. And one more thing I want to say, the people who, is, who lives in Los Angeles that are not Armenian, if you have any cause that is violating, it's related to human rights, we're going to be there for you too. But today, we need your help. We need you to be next to us because we as a human person, we need you to stand for the justice because there are people, there are countries because of the money and so on and on, they're violating human rights and they're committing yeah. genocide today in 2023. It's unacceptable. Yeah. Um, Arusha, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, and I want to thank you for everything you've done being part of this group. Um, again, I am, a, I am uh, humbled by what you guys are doing. And uh, I know Mike and I will be there tomorrow. We'll, yep. we'll join the fight. Anything else you want to say before I let you go out of the show? Uh, one more thing, actually. Uh, your question more was how I got involved with the thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to give a little bit of background, but uh, I lost it. Uh, after 2016, my mission kind of was to, to try to bring the groups, organizations together, kind of to be a glue between them. And I, uh, like, there's many failed attempts also, but what came out of 
this and like Rob said, uh, this was after 2020. So we were able to like bond together and it's 13 of us today from different backgrounds, from different political views, but the amount of love and respect we have for each other and which actually uh, transfers out to those who are around us today. There are about 500 people that, that constantly show up for protests. And I want to encourage Armenians living in United States, uh, in, the, in Los Angeles to, to come and feel this to come and bring their kids. So there is so much love in that environment. When they come, they don't want to leave. Like sometimes so it's 2, 3 a.m. and there's still like hundreds of people there. So they, they just want to stick around. So we want this to be contagious and I believe it will be. It just, it time, is we're running yes, of out of it's time. Contagious. We're running out of time. Artsakh is like the situation is very dire. I have friends, families, and I talk to them every day. And let's, you know what, you can live, you can fight without food, but you cannot fight without hope. Of course. Let's, let's just give them as much hope as possible. They're strong people, they're fighters, they love their land, but they need our support and they need it today. Please join us. Yeah. Thank you, Alsha. Thank you. We'll, we'll we'll definitely see you there tomorrow. There's 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 another invite. Yeah. Well, you enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you for staying up with us. I know it's getting late, so uh, we'll let you go and and we'll see you tomorrow at the march. See you tomorrow, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Alsha. Good night. Another great team member of you guys. Uh, yeah. I wish we could bring everybody on oh uh, one by <laughs> one, like do a roll call. <laughs> with the others Why well you know what um crazy idea maybe one of these protests we can do a live podcast from there <laughs> you know what just these strong you internet to transfer the love that alosha was talking about yeah through your podcast so people see how the energy the love the respect yeah. the the bond we've created with this 500 people. I have my, my biggest fan. She's like well, two years old when she sees me. Anush, she yells at the crowd. And I'm like, hi. You know, like we all know each other yeah. already. And they come every single protest. They come support. They bring food. And honestly, I wanted to mention this a little bit. All these 12 days, us, the core group, we never bought food. But there was plenty of food. Yeah. yeah. 500 people they would just bring it with them we had coffee we had dessert we had this yeah. like please don't Blankets, every anyway, time they come they bring something they're like they were coming to our house like it's our first time here we're not going to come yeah. empty handed it's, it's, it's like, it's like right? the I'm, i want to give it a little more positive i know we all kind of went into sad mode with everything happening but we need to stay positive yes we need to stay positive and believe it or not um when we when i started doing protests like so what do you get out of it i'm like honestly at every protest, I meet at least 10 great people. Why is that the first question somebody has to ask? I don't always ask. I'm already no, immune to it. No, they're immune to it. But you know what? Come on. It's true. Every protest I meet in my phone book, I have at least 10 great people that I meet yeah. and we make friends with. And another 10, another 10, another 10. So you need to be there to network with your big family that we created. So. Yeah. There's no question asked. We don't we don't talk about politics. I go around and I talk to every single one of them. I try at least. That's why you, you can't find Anush nowhere. And everyone's screaming Anush. And I, I try. I try my best to communicate with everyone, to give my love and energy to every single one that came and respected. So, I mean, be there. Feel the energy. Be filled with the love that we give to each other and be inspired by it. I don't want to sound like we're talking big, but it the love is there. Yeah. yeah. 
and we want everybody to come and be part of this love yeah part of the 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 movement that has started and uh it's, organically it's organically and it's going to continue and now we're seeing like you said the the politicians getting involved uh and and it's all because of the little people who made this happen the regular folk who yeah. went out there and the, and that's Absolutely. you guys and i'm proud of you guys um i want to um you know um usually we have a thing that we say when we end the show but i want to give the mic to you guys your last thoughts before we call a night i know we're getting into two hours you guys got to go home <laughs> i know you got three kids to get to i got three kids to get to like so you have two daughters there yeah. you go uh mike has uh I don't have kids work yet. to <laughs> But look at look at a smile on his yeah. face. He's so wired up. He came from a hockey game. Oh, I just game. came from a hockey game, so I've got all this adrenaline in me. Yeah, let's go. Let's go to the so, now. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but before you guys take the mic, I want to say that that QR code in the corner, uh, uh, unblock uh, humanity. Please, please scan that. Go fill out that letter, and um, it's gonna help. Like as uh, like Robert said, there's a big resolution that france is trying to put together yes. this this is uh, france has always been an ally yeah 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 so um let's start with you and then we'll end with anush um we say so much dear armenians i tell i tell this way we say so much while we're here we try to show uh, i hope you can feel that we love you and we care about our ethnicity we care about our heritage we care about our people our diaspora our country armenia and artsakh first i want to talk um to artsakh people i know they don't speak english but you know i'm gonna try you know you can, say it, you can say it in Armenian. Yeah, really go ahead to this conversation of Armenia course then, this most part i think it's better for me to he's been that. waiting for this <laughs> go ahead. because like you know um i have followers also you know people watching that so Seli Hainakis Ner Jan, uh Vortagel Vordukima Prume, Kayastanum Lini, Arsa Humlini, Spirkum Lini, Ashari Vorveket and Vorapumek. Desani Jura Kanchure, Ispezev Menk, Unek Partakanutsuner. Mer Partakanutsuner, Bajan Vatsa, Tarber Katikurane Michev. Unek Partakanutsun, Terekasne Luira Zekelu, Hayastanum, Arsa Hum Ira Vijaka, Unek Partakanutsun, Kan Hair Partakanutsun. Espain, Samane Pahelu, Kam Partakan Martik or Partakan Sunen, Yerkire Kavarelu. Menk Espain, Mer Partakan Suna, Merchantine Lusa Banelu, Mia Vurvelu, Mia Bankerpov, Hartar Medimak Kangas Hantire. Seli Arsak Sinerjan, Spurka de Siruma, Spurka de Korkina, Spurka de Chile Kelu Chile Kelu, Vorvetev Duk, Duk Mermi Masnek, Menk de Sirumenk, U. Mikhaili Hamar, Mezanit Yura Kanchures, Inchkano Irahan Artsunerma, Patras and Tara Luzes, Patras and Tara Lumerazgin, Patras and Tara Lu, Vorhayastan, Spurk, Artsakh, Parak Vaskap and Noris Vera Mia Vorvi, U Aisan Kamartan, Ahak Kerpov, Menkarhonak Stertel Hazo Yerki, Unan and Kazor Miasna Kan Spurk, Azor Diaspora. Bolorit Sirumem, U Hordurmem, Yura Kanchu, Hai Vorte Volinek, Aravele Vizete Apromek Los Angelesum. Icemer meeting the Icemer protest ne, the status ne, the Hatsatur ne, in short Katarvma. Katarvma, Mia, Numia, and Mekpacharo, Hazorats Nelu Arsaha, Arsahi Hantine Lusa Banelu, Hanra Nats Nelu, Vorpesi Bolor, Petuts Ned Rekavar, Martik, Avili Helamet Voroshum Kaisnen. Umekir mer parta vurtsnev handers mer hoku part ke katarek mer hai renikum zovat azata martik neri antanik neri hamar harksan hazar hai espain kentani arta khum meng zer koch kinek zorjan meng desiru meng. Shna kalsun. He pretty much said everything that I wanted to say. You say, say the English version. <laughs> we. Uh, <laughs> if you always do this. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was my. So, um, I mean. What I say at every protest, you guys know on a show already, I say, yes, Siru Mamez. And I've been saying this for three years, and I even have T-shirts and everything. I, I, I want everyone to feel the love. And, um, I like it. Yeah, yes, Siru Mamez. I love us. And and you know what? I want you guys to keep on saying that. And, and, and believe it or not, it, when you keep on saying, I love us, yes, Siru Mamez, I, I don't know. I feel the unity. 
I feel I want to stand by David, by you guys, by other followers that come. We want to stand together because Armenian power is within us. It's among us and it's with together when we stand together. That's the only time and that we're strong. And I want us to come together, join our family, right? We have, yes. We're already about like 500, but we want more. So uh, we, we need to spread the love. We need to spread the love. We need to love each other, respect each other. Just be there for each other. I mean, David said most of it. And I want to say to all the Artak people, I love you guys. I love the strength you have. You, you, you're Armenian. Artak is Armenian. Armenian and Armenian is going to be. And there's no question about it. And we're here to help you. We're here to support you. And in any way possible. We love you guys. Well said. Well said. Well, um, I want to thank everybody who joined us um, tonight, who's watching us, uh, who will be listening to us. I'll have this up tomorrow. I promise I'm going to work all night, edit this so we can put it up on the podcast platform. Um, and we will be there tomorrow. Again, that is tomorrow. If you are in Los Angeles or surrounding areas, come to the March. Uh, this will be 6 p.m. at the um, uh Azerbaijani consulate, consulate on on Wilshire. Um, you guys, if you need more information, come follow AYF West their Instagram and uh, get more information. But please, please, please grab everybody you know, yeah. bring your non-Armenian so friends. Let's have a big show and show the world what we can do as a diaspora. When we stand together, yeah, when we stand together. Yeah, invite everybody you can. Um, I want to thank you guys again for thank joining you. us. We thank appreciate you. this. Uh, I know this was Sorry last for my, minute. For my uh, late entrance. It's okay, Mikey. <laughs> okay. Um, um, again, I, I appreciate for Robert putting this together last minute. Uh, I know I sure, kind yes. of out of nowhere <laughs> came up with this idea, but I wanted to do this because it means a lot to me, um, especially, you know, being so fresh coming from Armenia and everything I saw, which is another episode me and Mike will do and discuss my experience there. Um, but, um, again, we'll see everybody locally who's going to be there at the protest mm -hmm. and, uh, we'll be back with our official first episode next, uh, Thursday. Thursday. And, um, as we always say at the end of the show, respect one another, love one another, love one until another. the next episode, yes. take care of yourselves.